Vasuha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhyo Yona Prachodayat Namaste everyone. Today we are going to speak about Anuswara. Anuswara is a kind of um, consequence of the vowels. In Sanskrit, the word swara is related to breath, and uh, um, in the phonetics of Sanskrit, the word swara is used for the vowels because the vowels need only the breath mainly to be uh, manifested. So there are several vowels in, in Sanskrit A, A, I, I, U, U E, I, O, A And then we have the Anuswara Am And the Visarga Aha It's not Aha It's Aha But Visarga is going to come in another video So in Anuswara it goes along with the swara. Anu, it's in several places, can mean along with. So, when you have a swara and it ends in a specific manner, and this is how what we are going to speak in this video, is going to be called anuswara. For example, if we chant Om, there is no anuswara there. If we chant the Anuswara is there for two reasons. One is that there is the space of time when you're feeling the vibration of the M, and the other is that M and M are different. Once again, M, M, this is the M sound. And the other one is the Anuswara. Mm. Actually, the Anuswara is more properly represented as a dot above the M. Because even though the mouth is kind of shape of the M, mm, the sound in the Anuswara is going upwards. It's moving up to the uh, mula, up to the root of the nose. So when we practice the Anuswara, our throat gets expanded, our jaws and uh, the things above, above the jaws that I don't know the name in English are with space between them. And also there are some Udana Vayu going up. We have this ascending force that is taking the energy from the throat to the brain to this area where the Agnya Chakra is usually represented. So let's see. In this way, there is a kind of uh, physiology, but also energetics, that creates a force upward. And this force uh, helps to activate this area of the brain that is very important so that we can have more clarity in life. So when we are practicing on the swara, it's important to remember that the sound is not only in the lips. In the lips there is the effects of little sensations. Mm, please put your fingers, the tip of your fingers in your, your, in your lips. Mm. See how you can increase the resonance there. Mm. When the resonance is big, it's a good sign. It doesn't need to be uh, strenuous. It just has to be with some effort. The throat is going to be a little bit stretched mm. and for this the chin 
is going to go a little bit inward. It's just like maybe 10 degrees. It's very less the difference. When you give this inclination, it's very, very less so, so that there is a kind of um, arrangement where the, t the top of your head can be bring upward and in this way the chin goes a little bit inside and you have more space in your body to increase the scale, to increase the size of the resonation inside. I'm not saying that when you're chanting all the mantras you're going to be all these things, but when you're practicing, just like in the previous video where we were doing Lam, Vam, Ram, Yam, Ham, In this kind of situation, you can bring proper attention to make all the mechanism to work in a more precise manner. When you're chanting, it's not going to be like that because the Nada Yoga is not actually um, chanting mantras in the sense of music. It's um, making the sound to do the yoga. <laughs> So it's not so easy to do that. It's important to have a lot of focus and concentration, not so many mosquitoes in your in your face. So you can bring the maximum effect of that technology to the proper place. You can put some sound, some uh, jukebox there to uh, shooty box to make some um, background, but more than this, you are going to raga, you are going to other areas of the practice of mantra. But the Nada Yoga is you with the japa and the chanting mainly. So there is a lot of things to be concentrated and a lot of things to pay due attention, and in this way you can and spend some 5-10 minutes of your practice before starting to chant mantras in a way in kirtans, bhajans, doesn't matter all of them have their um, purpose but this you can consider as a kind of self-tuning in a way that you are bringing attention to the power of the sound because Nada Yoga is mainly making the sound very powerful, <laughs> it's really very powerful. If you practice the previous video with the attention of this Udana effect on your system, you're going to see that there is a lot of blood, a lot of energy going to your forehead. So don't keep several hours doing that, it's not needed and maybe it's not very helpful. You spend 5-10 minutes doing it can be only om but these several bija mantras are good to increase the awareness in this forehead region the agnya chakra lam vam ram yam hum See that there are some effort here to make all this structure to work in a very uh, extended manner. Lum, 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 yum, hum. In our Namaste Satwa retreats, we work with these Bija Mantras in a kind of Kriya Yoga, that is another subject. And then we have... Uh, 
it's really good it's amazing um, but the uh and the ah uh is going to be the topic of the next video if you like these videos please give your comments and uh, share your experience with us in the comments and um, we see you in the next video in this series of Nada Yoga. From the next video onwards, it's going to be Nada Yoga. Okay, namaste.